I grew up on slower, gentler ways back in South Australia, but since moving to the East Coast three years ago, I've had to adjust to the fast, hollow waves over here. It's taken some time. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking that waves are waves, but they're actually not. They change all the time, and as surfers, we need to be able to adjust to varying wave size, speed, and shape constantly as we move around the world chasing surf. So today I thought I'd cover the most important aspects of those adjustments. My name is Kale Brock and this is how to surf fast hollow waves, both big and small. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and join me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli. We've got some good waves today. Let's jump into it. Waves are a little bit steeper today, so I think I'm gonna take out the thruster. So I've got this beautiful old twinny, well it's not old, it's actually new, but it is a twin fin. So it's only got two fin slots, um, which naturally means it's gonna be a little bit looser. And because the waves are steep today, I don't actually want a loose board. I want something with a lot more control. So I'm gonna go with the thruster. It's got sharper rails. Um, even though this board's got a little bit more volume, give me more speed, potentially, I think this board today is gonna help me harness that speed. So I'm gonna go with this one here, the Raptor. Choosing the right board for any surf has a massive impact on your session. For smaller waves with less intensity, it can be pretty easy to cruise on something like a fish or a foamy. But for steep, fast waves, regardless of the size, you'll generally need a sharper, more traditional shape board. This is because a typical performance board tends to offer a bit more control than a loose fish might. Shorter boards also fit in the wave more easily, allowing us to perform on its face without nose diving or catching rail. So for fast hollow waves, pick a board that's slightly sharp in its outline. The paddle into fast hollow waves is a little more demanding than simply stroking into a softly breaking swell. Many of the people that I coach struggle with this one component of their surfing, that is adjusting their paddling intensity to suit the waves. Fast, steep waves are just that, they're faster and steeper, which means they crash quickly and often with a vengeance. As you can see here, this is only a medium sized wave and yet I have to paddle very intensely to catch it. Paddling fast into this wave ensures that I have time to pop up and then get in front of and away from the falling lip. I see so many surfers who get scared at the paddling point on steeper waves because their board gets sucked back up the face quite dramatically. This then causes them to stop paddling or start slap paddling, which is actually more dangerous than paddling faster because it means the surfer is now trying to pop up right near the crashing lip as opposed to moving away from it. And this often leads to them either being pitched over the falls or reaching the bottom of the wave with no space or time to turn in the direction they want to go. In this circumstance, it is paradoxically more safe to paddle harder and faster because this keeps you away from the falling lip. Even if you fall off, it's much less intense of a wipeout at the bottom of the wave as opposed to wiping out at the top of the wave and becoming part of that falling lip. <laughs> I really cannot emphasize enough just how important paddling is to ensure you enter faster, steeper waves with enough momentum to make that takeoff successfully. You can intensify your paddling by leaning forward like an attacking cobra for the last few strokes. You can also kick your legs to increase that forward motion on top of the water. Okay, we're at a 
bit of a sticking point now and that is the takeoff. On steep waves there's a lot more going on than just your standard pop-up technique. Generally speaking, taking off on steeper waves requires a faster execution of the standard process and a certain degree of forethought. Surfers must be two or three steps ahead in their mind as they take off on steep waves because there is often smaller room for error and as I said before, things are moving quickly. Pick the wrong line and the lip could land on your head. The section could break away without you. Surfing steeper waves requires careful evaluation of the individual wave itself and a quick adjustment to suit its needs. Just like a good girlfriend. The overall increase in the speed and intensity of rides means that a lot of these skills have to be deeply ingrained, embedded within your nervous system and your musculature. This is where I think surfing's true kinesthetic nature reveals itself and most often instinct completely takes over. Getting into steep waves requires matching their speed and intensity. And it also requires commitment and not just of the mind, but the body as well. Leaning forward becomes a major player in getting into steep, fast, hollow waves. This is important once a surfer has reached their feet. I see so many beginner surfers automatically lean back because they get intimidated by the steep cup presented to them at the bottom of a hollow wave. This, maybe surprisingly, is actually more dangerous than leaning forward and committing down the face because as I mentioned earlier, it only intensifies the eventual drop we must take as the wave gets steeper and steeper before crashing. By getting down the curve of the wave as early as possible, we avoid that steepness and can get out in front of the lip. This is important though, whilst leaning forward, the surfer can prevent nose diving by simply having more weight on their back foot during this time. This prevents as much as possible the nose of the board from catching and being propelled underwater and also allows us to engage our fins in the wave as quickly as we can in order to make the necessary changes in direction. Riding these steeper, hollower waves requires some specific skills whilst actually standing up on your board. This forward leaning is a crucial component of surfing steeper waves because it creates forward momentum, which we can then carry into our first turns on the wave. Because we are generally gonna be moving faster on steeper, hollower waves, surfing them becomes a lot more back foot oriented. This is because we have enough speed, harnessed from the increased power of the wave, with which we can use to generate turns on the board. Being more back foot dominant whilst going fast allows us to control that speed more effectively and to direct our board more efficiently. This is because our back foot is directly over the fins of the board and by making subtle adjustments between the heel and toe, it can easily change the direction we are going. The front foot is still important, it just becomes less important in steeper, hollower waves because we spend less time trying to generate speed, but rather spend time harnessing and controlling it instead. Well, that is it for this week's video guys I do hope you enjoyed it I want to thank you for all your comments and suggestions on last week's video and I really really look forward to sharing this new season with you we've got so much coming your way so make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the like button comment below let me know what else you're struggling with in the surf and join me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli the surf's gone to shit. so I'm not going back out there I'm going home cut <laughs> Now actually riding these steeper, hollower waves requires some skills to be there whilst 